Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and today I want to take a look at a brand new map coming to Battlefield 1 called Fort DeVoe. The first time I laid eyes on this bad boy, and I'm guessing I'm not the only one who had these thoughts, I automatically assumed that this was going to be the new Operation Metro Meat Grinder map, and to some extent, that's exactly what it is. Now, some people are probably thrilled by this news because Operation Metro and Lockers, if you guys remember, were some of the most popular maps back in Battlefield 4. There was something about that gameplay that clearly appealed to a wide audience. I don't know if it was because it was easy to rank up your different classes, you could literally just play as a medic, not get a single kill, and still reach the top of the scoreboard because people were dying and taking damage all around you. It could be because the action was very centralized. You get to that front line, you're gonna have someone to shoot at basically instantaneously, and you don't need to be scouring an entire map looking for a single kill. The downside of it though is that a lot of people just simply didn't enjoy those maps because of the meat grinder. It wasn't all that compelling and so for me personally, I was a little worried that that was going to be the exact same type of gameplay that we were going to be getting with Fort DeVoe. It was going to be grenade spam, gas spam was going to be a serious problem, and it wasn't going to be all that compelling. Thankfully, that's not really the case with this map. It still does have those meat grinder moments, and I think it's going to appeal to this audience. You guys are going to notice already, hopefully throughout today's video, uh, that you're going to have situations where you and 20 teammates are running down a hallway, you encounter another tw 20 enemies, and you're going to duke it out. The thing that differentiates this map from Metro and Lockers, though, is that it's not linear, and it actually has a lot of flanking routes. As soon as you notice that things are getting bogged down around an objective, and you don't want to enter into the meat grinder, you have every ability to just choose a different hallway. There was never really a situation where I felt stuck on Fort DeVoe. I never felt like, oh great, I'm stuck here, I can't move anywhere. I basically just have to hope and pray that our teammates are able to push out from this certain objective so that we can actually take some other points. The way that DICE has balanced and designed this map is that you're going to have a lot of options here. Now, one downside that I did notice fairly quickly, and I don't know if there's going to be anything that DICE can do about it because of its close quarter nature, is that the spawn system is fairly atrocious. The spawn system in Battlefield 1 has never really been all that great, but it is exasperated on this map. I've had numerous occasions where I spawned in front of an entire squad of enemies. And while I might have been lucky enough to take out one or two of them, which sucks for those players because they shouldn't have to account for someone spawning out of thin air all of a sudden directly in front of their squad mates, like they shouldn't have to think about that, but of course I'm going to immediately get mowed down by everyone else. And while it's not the worst thing ever, like I, I don't want to say it happens every spawn, it's not that bad. I did notice because of its close quarter nature, it's got to spawn you somewhere, and because it's essentially just a bunch of long hallways, eventually someone's going to be in that hallway around you, and you are going to have those moments where someone spawns or you spawn directly in front of them. And I was noticing this a lot more compared to other Battlefield 1 maps. Uh, one thing I do have to commend DICE on though with the design and the balance of the map is that it allows for a wide variety of different playstyles. The first time I jumped in, I automatically assumed that everyone was going to play as the Assault class because why wouldn't you want to use an SMG or a shotgun on a close quarter map? That just kind of seemed like a no-brainer and I thought that that class was going to reign supreme. And while of course a lot of people are going to have that playstyle, you can absolutely use long range weapons. I had no problem using light machine guns or bolt action rifles because the map was designed in a way that accommodates those playstyles. For example, if you're using a bolt action rifle, you could run around in the long hallways and put yourself at a disadvantage, or you could play it smart and take the objectives that are on the outside of the map. One great thing about the outside is that not only does it allow these different classes to excel or different weapons to excel at long range, uh, but it also gives the map a nice scale to it. When you're running around on the inside, it's hard to get a good gauge of how large this map is. As soon as you step out though and you start to take the sea capture point where the fortress is kind of crumbling in, you realize how massive this fortress was. And so I got to give a tip of my hat to DICE for having this outside section because they could have made everything indoors and close quarters. Like that's, a, I assumed how everything was going to be designed, but because it does have this outside section, it allows for different play styles, allows for different gameplay, but it also just makes this map a hell of a lot more epic. Uh, as for the weapons that are going to be available with this DLC, I think the theme of all of them, and the best way to describe them, is that they're all slow rate of fire, high damage weapons. The LMG, for example, hits like a truck, it, it will three shot people, but the downside of it is that it has a rounds per minute of 350. 
I think that is the slowest, or if not one of the slowest, rate of fire automatic weapons in the game. It also only has 20 rounds in its magazine. And so if you're using this gun and you're on your game, you are going to destroy people up close and at medium distance. This gun will rip through the enemy team and you will have no problem taking out multiple targets, even with that really low magazine size. The problem though is that as soon as you start to miss one or two bullets and you're going against an incompetent assault player, they've got a lot more wiggle room. They can miss two, three, four, five shots if they're using the automatico. You don't have that because of that very slow rounds per minute. Same is true for the new medic weapons. The medic gun will two shot people up close, but it has also a very slow RPM, making it kind of challenging if you are missing one or two of your shots. And so all in all, it's gonna be interesting to see how these new weapons perform. I've enjoyed them so far. The new assault weapon, for example, I didn't think I was gonna enjoy the bipod. I really enjoy the bipod in it. If you just get up to a ledge in a building, you're gonna have no problem taking people out at a lot further distance than you're normally able to when you are playing as the assault class. Uh, all in all though, Fort DeVoe has made me a bit more excited about this upcoming DLC. I went in hesitant thinking that it was essentially just going to be another Operation Metro Meat Grinder. And while that is there, it's actually a lot of fun. It has a lot of flanking routes, there's a lot of variety here, and while I might change my tune when I get when I get more playtime with it, so far I'm digging it and I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to enjoy this, this entirely infantry focused map. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Give me your thoughts on Fort DeVoe. Are you enjoying it as much as I am? If you've had a chance to play it on the CTE, are you disappointed by what you've seen so far? Give me your thoughts down below. Uh, but yeah guys, until tomorrow, have a good one, and take it easy.